Hi folks, and welcome back to the shack. This is Joe N2DI today with a great portable automatic antenna tuner from Elecraft. Can you guess? That's right, it's the T1. How did you like that reveal? I thought of that all by myself. The T1 is not a new piece of gear by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still worth talking about today. This palm-sized antenna tuner can withstand up to 20 watts of power and covers bands 160 through 6 meters. The T1 is a lightweight and compact automatic antenna tuner that runs on a single 9-volt battery. You can get it as a kit or factory built. If you wished, you could pull the antenna tuner out of your KX2 or KX3 to use with your other QRP rigs. Well, this comes pretty close to that. Let's get to the point. Is the T1 a great automatic antenna tuner? Yes, it is. Does it have a wide matching range? Yes, it does. Is it expensive? You bet it is. It's made by Elecraft. It normally goes for $289 US, but hang on for a second for a quick disclaimer. If you have gas like me, that's gear acquisition syndrome, you might want to stop this video right now because I'm about to enable you. By the time this video is released, which should be the first week of October 2024, Elecraft has pre-built T1s in stock for $264 with free shipping. But you better hurry up because the sale ends on Halloween, October 31st. Having to pay full price for this antenna tuner on November 1st makes Halloween extra scary this year. Let's talk specs. This antenna tuner is 4.5 inches long by 2.5 inches wide by a little under an inch thick and weighs 5 ounces. And that includes the battery. Its operating range is a half a watt to 20 watts single sideband or CW, 10 watts FM, AM, or digital. The suggested power level for tuning is 2 to 5 watts. Like I said earlier, it covers bands 160 through 6 meters and can match an SWR range of 10 to 1. The current drain is 20 milliamps only when it's tuning. Otherwise, it's drawing nothing because it powers down. It has latching relays. So once it finds a match, that's it. It turns off. Let's talk about the interface. You have your antenna and transceiver BNC connectors at the top and a ground lug in the middle. On the front, you have a quick reference printed right there so you don't have to worry about carrying the manual with you. Although this is a simple automatic antenna tuner to use, you probably won't need it too much. The front has three LEDs, a green, yellow, and red, and two buttons. The left one is the power tune button, and the right one is the bypass and info button. The left side has a remote control jack for Yesu FTE 817 or 818, which you don't really need. On the back, you have a battery compartment. And that's it. It's simple. And simple is good. Let's walk through how to use the T1. It basically gives you four functions. It can obviously match your antenna, but it can also provide a low resolution SWR meter. What do I mean by low resolution? Well, it's not going to give you an exact number, but it's going to give you an approximation of your SWR. It can also provide a low resolution power meter, meaning the same thing. It won't give you your exact power, but it'll give you a good approximation. You can bypass the tuner while it's connected if you need to, and you can ask it for an extended information report, which I'll explain later. Okay, let's see this tuner in action. To initiate a tune cycle, long press the power tune button until the green LED comes on. Then you have three seconds to put out your carrier tone. While it's tuning, it will also display the SWR by lighting up a combination of the LEDs. If the green LED comes on, the SWR is less than 1.5 to 1. If the green and yellow come on, it's 1.5 to 1. If yellow comes on, it's about 2 to 1. If yellow and red comes on, it's about 2.5 to 1. And if red turns on, then it's 3 to 1 or higher. Okay, let's tune with it. Press and hold. Green LED's on. You have 3 seconds to key the transceiver. Now that was an especially difficult frequency to match. It normally doesn't take that long, but that SWR is 1.03 to 1 now. Okay, to display the power meter, short press the power tune button and then transmit within three seconds. A combination of LEDs will light up to display your power level. Green means it's a half a watt to one and a half watts. Green plus yellow means 1.5 to 3 watts. Yellow means 3 to 5 watts. Yellow plus red is 5 to 8 watts, and red is over 8 watts. Right now I'm going to put out about 3 watts, so let's see. So 
So I'm getting green and yellow, which means 1.5 to 3 watts, so it's correct. Now to bypass the tuner, short press the power tune button, and the yellow LED will blink. Then short press the bypass button. The T1 will light up the yellow LED if it's bypassed, and it'll light up the green one if the tuner is in line. And you could do it again to toggle. So yellow means it's bypassed. Green means it's in line. Back to bypassed. Back to in line. The last function is an information report. It communicates the information by blinking the LEDs in slow Morse code. The report will include things like the SWR, the battery voltage, the inductance in microhenries, the capacitance in picofarads, the network configuration, the band ID, and the firmware version. And it will use the letter R as the decimal point. So say for instance your SWR is 1.5 to 1 and your battery voltage is 8.9 volts. It will report S1R5, meaning your SWR is 1.5. And for your voltage it'll report V8R9 which means your voltage is 8.9 volts. And it will continue so on with the rest of the information from the report. To get this information report, short press the power tune button and the yellow LED will begin to blink. Then you long press the bypass info button. Okay, let's talk pros and cons. The pros are it's lightweight, it's simple to use, it's very power efficient, and it covers a wide SWR range. It also doesn't give up trying to find a solution for your SWR when it hits 1.5 like some other antenna tuners. It will keep going to try to find the best match possible. It's great that the T1 can handle up to 20 watts of power for rigs that are slightly more powerful than QRP rigs like the FX4CR and similar types. The T1 has been able to match every antenna that I've thrown at it so far, and I've thrown a lot of antennas at it. As far as cons go, I can't think of a single real issue that I've bumped into. The only nitpick I have is that you can drain the battery if you pack it in a bag where something can hit the buttons in the front. That happened to me once. I pulled it out to use it and the battery is dead, and it was a new battery to begin with. There are a couple of approaches that you can take to fix this. You can take the high-tech route and 3D print a cover for it, like that. Or you can take the low-tech route, if you don't have a 3D printer, and just turn the battery around in the battery compartment. Much simpler. So to sum things up, the T1 is a really good one and done automatic antenna tuning solution. If you have a low power transceiver without a built-in automatic antenna tuner, like the ICOM IC705, the ASU FT818, the Lab 59 TX500, the QRP Labs QMX, and so on, well then the T1 is a perfect match, pun intended. Now, why would you want the T1 versus something like the ZM2? Well, it depends on a couple of things. First, do you want to or can you blow $290 on a tuner? Because the ZM2 is going to be a lot less. Number two, are you more frequently parking and barking? Meaning, are you a POTO soda activator or are you calling CQ more often than hunting around for contacts? If you're constantly tuning around, depending on how broadbanded your antenna is, a manual antenna tuner like the ZM2 can get annoying real quick because you're going to have to constantly adjust it. But if you're just going to sit on one frequency and call CQ, well then the ZM2 is just fine. The third thing to consider is, do you need the SWR and power indicators that the T1 gives you? If your rig has them, well, it's not that important. But say you have something like an SW3B. The SWR indicator on the T1 comes in pretty handy then. Ultimately, you have to decide what's more important to you. But if you do opt for the T1, you're definitely not throwing your money away. It really is a great antenna tuner. So from the Shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health and 72. Bye-bye.